All right, welcome to the new season. I think we've done a pretty good job protecting our development gains through the regs change, so the car should be pretty decent. But get out there, let us know how it feels. What is happening, everybody? It's Spark, and welcome to the first round of season two of my My Team Career Mode. We are at the Bahrain Grand Prix, and after last, after the preseason video, as you will have known, I've skipped one season and then started to reboot the series with um, a new season. We're going to go into mediums, um, medium length, just so I can get the videos out quickly enough. So if you are, so if you do like the videos and want to see more, then do leave a like and subscribe and leave a comment as well. That will really, really help me out on the channel. It's here. So looking at the upgrades, I think we focused more on aero and um, aero and chassis. Because they were the parts I really felt were really lacking in the first season. We have Dan Tictum as our teammate for this um, for the first um, half of this season. He's doing okay. And we've done a driver training camp as well to help boost some of his stats. But as you can see, I'm already looking through some of the stuff that I want to develop. I know the cable assembly I want to develop. Tire blankets as well to help with tire wear is also happening underway. We haven't got a rival yet, so I highly suspect that will be our first... Um, foray into the season to pick our rival which I'm hoping it will be somebody with about Alfa Romeo down because that's really where we are so looking at practice there wasn't really much to shout about out that's really where I want to be able to get the resource points so I'm not really too fussed about particularly times at the moment as you can see um, the Alfa Romeo of Raikkonen I think it was getting in my way and Unlike in real life, he hasn't retired, so he's decided to stick around for yet another year. So we had the race strategy, tyre saving, and I think it was Ur's strategy as well, which um, we haven't got a clip so far for, for this video. But this corner right here, as you see, is an absolute bane in my existence. Because you come down from about 7th gear down to 2nd, braking not necessarily in a straight line. So you're just asking to lock up your tyres. So as you'll see, like with the times of practice there, I'm not exactly... High up. Let's have your take on it. Who would you say is your biggest rival at the moment? Oh, great. They left me plenty of choice. And looking at the way paces with the cars, and I feel like the Aston Martin drivers should be a rival. So I'm going to pick Vettel. You spent a lot of time on the track during practice. Does the car have enough reliability to sustain that? Our, our reliability upgrades are quite very, are quite up there, so we're going to go with quite a confident answer down here. Appreciate your time. But that, actually, that answer, as you know, so I was actually focused more on the aero side, so obviously me getting confused with myself there. As you see, I've got all the resource points so I can, but Tictum is struggling on his end. Development boost, I've got nine deployed there, so hopefully it takes... Um, Plenty off the diffuser upgrade, cable assembly, and a little bit off the, I think it was the magnetic compound, the dynamo. So that will take more, particularly once you get to the powertrain, because that's another area I really need to upgrade on this car, because it's only got about 10 upgrades applied to it. So that's a... Wait, hang on a minute, I had nine there. So why is it only giving me six? I had nine development boost upgrades, far from getting that from practice. But for some reason, the game's decided to only give me six. Which, you know, very consistent. It's like Michael Massey is the actual AI behind this. Michael. Michael, this isn't right. So looking at the upgrades available to us, we are going to go for a cylinder head upgrade on our car. And I'm sa I think I'm saving a little bit of money for um, more upgrades on the aerodynamic side. Hopefully, um, I should have enough room to do it once the build time comes down. But Powertrain will slowly start to invest in that over the course of the season. And with that, we're going to be um, looking to get round to qualifying. Let's see how far we can get up the grid. Yeah, now I'm thinking the yellow um, Zenon logo on our car probably just doesn't feel right. And I'm really honest, I'm not expecting to get, it's get I'm not expecting to get very far into this qualifying session if I high up the grid because we got the set to 100 AI and we're so far with the ninth, 
fastest car. And, like I said, I'm not really expecting us anything to get worse. And, whoa, 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 and, ah, uh, ah, uh, already, already, we, we, we made a mess of that. It's gone, that's gone very, very well for us. We're already back in the grid with the damaged front wing. Exactly what happened during my league racing retirement in Bahrain, where, on cold tyres, I just planted it at the same barrier. So, <laughs> no, that's not really a good start from us, but... We are going to go now to my actual lap, which was um, a very interesting set, interesting one to set. We've still got the line on. So we'll go down to second gear. Got to be gentle on the throttle. Not too much, otherwise we'll be spinning off into Kingdom Come. They open the gate with the second DRS zone here and just pick the braking one. Go very, very wide. Drop it down to third and don't take too much curve onto that right hander and I feel like that was a pretty good first sector with what I could muster Drop down to fifth. Maybe I was a bit hesitant there on the um, On the entries we go down to the this next corner after the light after the two S's and that's another one We have to be careful with your braking zone. You can go much further than what the line says and there as you can see we're being so gentle because any kind of sign of over aggression and you are just and I'm just gonna be locking a tire and I'll just be losing even more time. So let's go down to probably be one of my favourite sections of the lap. So once you get the car hooked up around around fifth and sixth gear around that long left hander, it's so nice to drive. At the end of the second sector, we're still a little bit down on Russell, but I feel like we've still got the engine to do it. To come down to the final corner once again we take a wide entry there we're breaking a little bit earlier has to be said but that means we can get on the power a little bit earlier as well which means the end of the lap could be a bit more satisfying for us as we come across the line what time have we done uh, what time have we done here so it's clear we're not in the top 14 and yeah it looks like I think I've got a feeling we're out but Dan Tickton has actually got through. How about that? Dan Tickton, with that, dry, try, with that driver training camp, has actually got through. And we have been absolutely stuffed in qualifying by our teammate Dan Tickton, who has been given a second lease of life after being let go from Williams. And as you see, with our rivalries um, with Sebastian Vettel, we are... Already one point down, Vettel um, qualified ahead of us, so he gets ahead of I don't think I've actually won one rivalry since I've actually started this career mode, as sad as that sounds. Tictum has, he's impressed me, and he's definitely showed that it was a good choice to obviously re-sign. Obviously, Tictum's not going to last them forever, because like I said earlier on in my, pre in my previous video, we want to get round to signing Ayrton Senna. But now we go into the race where we're not a particularly fast car with an outside chance of points. Months of rumour and speculation all come to an end today as we return to racing for the opening event of what promises to be an enthralling season. Welcome along then to round one of this year's Formula One World Championship. Formula One returns to the desert today on this exceptional 3.36 mile circuit. 15 corners provide plenty of overtaking opportunities. It could be a strategic race this one, with Sakir notorious for eating up the rear tyres. Watch out for drivers managing their rubber at some point during the Grand Prix. A new season then, a clean slate where anything could happen. Anthony Davidson is with me today as we get another year of Formula One underway. We're into those tense few minutes before the first race then. Everyone's a little bit nervous about reliability. They haven't been running in the hot, turbulent wake of other cars in practice. And they've not been pushing at 100% for long durations. Let's hope no one has to deal with any nasty surprises. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. An immense lap from Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position, and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Perez, Verstappen, Carlos Sainz, and Leclerc, Norris, Ricardo, Gasly, and Fernando Alonso, Sonoda, Vettel, Esteban Ocon, and Stroll. Raikkonen, Tigtum, Antonio Giovinazzi, and George Russell. The owner-driver, Mick Schumacher, Latifi, and Nikita Mazepin. 
It's almost time for those five red lights to go out. Then let's see who can prevail today. That time difference between myself and Tictum is definitely alarming. It's only a 25% race. Like I said, it's uh, better to produce videos quicker that way. So we're going to go for the standard strategy. Just get on the softs to about lap 6 and then get on to the mediums um, for the remaining 8 laps. So here we go then, guys. Season 2 is about to get fully underway as we change over now. As we go in to start the grid, and here we go, the four lights and the five lights are on. What's in store for us in this season two? And we are underway, and it's already a good start from us. A bad start from Russell, which means we have overtaken him, coming down up into the first corner. We're already behind our teammate Tictum. What's going to happen here as we absolutely yeet past the lot of them? That's about one, two, three, four, five, six corners here, and we go three abreast into turn three, turn two rather between ourselves, I think Sebastian Vettel and Fernando Alonso behind us as we go down to turn 4 now and at the end of the first section you can see where we catch up to Alonso, it was actually Ocon that I repassed on there I beg, I beg, my, I beg my own pardon um, here as we, as we see here you're going to see just where exactly I can gain and that's just how gentle everyone's been, they're breaking so early into these corners and as you'll see later on the Grand Prix that's going to be a bit of a problem for us as we go down to my least favorite corner probably in the world as we as you can see I mean just be I mean just there just coming out of second gear I'm finding it very very hard to uh, plant the to plant the throttle and with that the other car is just able to really pull away from us so there's probably probably a lot of work I need to do particularly on corner exits because that's just not the way. I know I had in my mind to upshift, but I just hadn't quite got into the rhythm of doing it, so that just kind of struggles there from there. And with that, with we got onto lap three. DRS has now been activated. We are behind Alonso. I think that we can stick with him with the DRS. We're not going to see any kind of overtake on this lap because I'm not still not confident out of that last sort of breaking po last breaking point of that um, twisty left hander into the third DRS zone. And with that, I mean, Tictum uh, looks like to be absolutely nowhere. I was expecting to be off the back of us or after that big qualifying lap. But obviously, we've got a front, which is Valtteri Bottas, who's the current world champion. I feel so weird putting that in the same sentence. He will be up defending against Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton in front of us. But as for now, the story's focus is on us. And as you can see just right there, they are absolutely romping away from me. Even though I've got DRS, there's not really much I can do with it. As we come down to the end of lap 4, I think this is a really, really good chance now to pass Fernando Alonso, who is also himself is down with Yuki Tsunoda. we got DRS and we've got the overtake deployed in the car. We go down to the first sector. We sense a little look on the inside of Alonso. And what's going to happen here? It's very, very gingerly, but we seem to get the traction outside the last corner. We go around the outside and we have passed Fernando Alonso. For, I think it was at 10th place and as you can see a few replays here a few corner angles of where I made the overtake stick just managed to get the traction right and with Vettel there as you'll see he was sort of a back view there from Sebastian Vettel's car us fighting each other causes him to be right on the back of Fernando Alonso which means it's going to be effectively a three car fight into the next corner but we just managed to stay ahead and things are certainly heating up for us as we Pull off an ambitious move, it has to say, on an Alpine, which I think on the ch on the performance chart is much faster than us. Even with us maintaining all of our upgrades, we still haven't made that much of an impact high up the grid. And we just maintain the position here. And now, let's see what's happened in front of us. And the Red Bull of Sergio Perez, Red Bull's Minister of Defence, seems to be having issues. And it looks like he's just parked the car. It doesn't seem like there's a massive car issue. Maybe he's just locked up and just waited for a clean gap in which to come out but that is not good news for Red Bull's second driver who is effectively falling down to all the way to the back of the grid now unfortunately Yuki Tsunoda is getting away from us in the Alpha Tauri as once again we're struggling out of that back corner and now we see Charles Leclerc has got an issue now Charles Leclerc and he's held up the McLaren the Ferrari number one behind him what is going on here that's going to put us right back into the mix Leclerc with a puncture us on the back of Sonoda could we possibly get a DRS overtake coming up into the 
next corner. It's about lap six, so without this time, we could think about coming in for fresh tyres, but Yuki Tsunoda is right within our grasp here. We got DRS and overtake open. Can we do anything with it? I don't think we can because Sonoda will have DRS from Carlos Sainz and the DRS is very powerful here so our advantage is somewhat negated by the fact that Yuki has got DRS on Sainz. As now with lap 7 to come out they had yellow flags coming along here so I think now is the perfect time to come out and pit with yellow flags as well to get the car slowed. And here we see how there's got to be absolute magic we've got to pull off here for this to work. As you'll see in front of us. And a twist. The safety car has been deployed. Which means for us, that could work out to our advantage. I mean, actually no, that won't work out to our advantage that much. Because other people would have had some time at racing speed. Which means I would have lost some... They can pit under the safety car. Which means I would have lost some time. As you see already, I've already got the tire, sc the, um, tire temperature screen loaded up on the MFD. Because I do not want a repeat of what happened to me in, in the IRL League race in Bahrain. Where on cold hard tires, I eventually spun the car and ruined my racing crash. And what was probably the most pathetic crash that I've ever seen. But our fight is really with Sonoda. And we see there's... Sebastian Vettel comes out in front of us into the pits. We have to give the position back. So Sebastian Vettel has jumped us there in the Aston Martin. We are... Oh, that has not worked out to our favour at all. And what you're going to see now as we see everybody catching up to the back of the safety car is the problem that the AI sort of have in terms of keeping our tyres warm. What happens is you'll get to a brilliant kind of... well. A deadly sort of concertina like here and your tyres absolutely freeze. They cool down so much because you're just not able to generate. I'm having to jump, have to go so far back. And effectively too far back for what the stewards think. Just so I can uh, I can get a bit of speed and thus a bit of heat into the tyres. Once we get round to lap 10 that looks like um, it's about, four, about two or three laps behind the safety car. So knowing what the safety car is like that could mean that... The safety car will be coming in at the end of this app, and it is coming in at the end of this app. But the good news for us, we are already in, we are looking like we are going to score some points in what has been a race where I was not expecting much at all. But the power of yeeting has set me through into the points. Yes, stay in position into the green flags, but we've got to get the jump on Vettel, whom we have also got the McLaren of Daniel Ricciardo behind us here. And, oh, we accidentally overtake. We just wait for them to go, and it looks like they have gone. They have certainly gone indeed, and we are pretty much prey to the McLaren behind us, unless we can pull off a pretty ambitious overtake on Vettel. As we go down to the inside, we could pass Vettel and Yuki Sonoda in one go as well. Sonoda loses out to the Aston Martin there of Sebastian Vettel. But there we have it, another daring overtake from us, which means we are now back in, we are back ahead of Vettel, which does good for our rivalry. Well, that means that Vettel's going to be all over us all the way to the end. We got Lando Norris, who is in a much faster McLaren. And with all this time lost in my least favourite corner, I'm already being so gentle with the brake. And I just can't get the traction I need. I mean, even with overtake, I'm, only, I'm, taking, these car, I'm taking this in second gear. But I haven't quite got the um, shifting early timing right, just so I can actually reclaim some of the traction and more throttle. Is the penultimate lap now. And DRS has been activated Vettel is going to be right on the back of my case we go to the back of him there but unfortunately for him he's way too far behind us to make any so I'm very surprised that Dan Tigtum isn't in front um, is in front with us fighting here the gap between us is a moment is quite a lot and after the good qualifying that he had um, yesterday I was hoping that Tigtum would be up there fighting with me so as you see I pretty much take my own line into lap into that tight right hander there because I fight that Breaking in a straight line in this game is kind of helping me 
get around. I mean, you have to make the braking as straight as possible just to prevent any wheels from locking. And Vettel is catching us. As you can see back here, Vettel is not too far behind us. We are in sixth place, however, which means this is all hopefully going to play into our hand. That will be a great debut for IRRL Spark Racing for Season 2 because... We only scored 23 points last time around. We have done this at 100 AI, which means it's certainly an upgrade from our previous season. And hopefully if things go better for us in terms of race performance, we can also maybe turn it up to um, half distance and have it done at 110 AI, which means it will, be, it will just be the fiercest thing there. Then from there I could turn the, the performance down. And generally my performance will get better as things get harder so I'll leave you guys to be the judge of that as we see behind Vettel is still closing up behind us he is so so close now once we come round to that um, DRS zone in sector 2 then that's going to be one to really watch out for as you'll see he's so so close behind me but can we hang on to what's going to be a brilliant P6 for us if we are able to pull this one off to go down to the left-hander. This is probably my favorite section of the track where I can make up a little bit of time. Straighten the braking down to the right-hander. Vettel is still behind us here. We are falling off the back of Lando Norris. There's up in front, I believe it's Lewis Hamilton out in front who looks to be going ahead to take this Grand Prix win. And here we go then. How far? He's very, very close. Is he going to overtake? So we deploy the overtake, but we've got to cut him off early. And we do cut him off early. And from there, as long as we keep this car planted to the road onto the next few set of corners without letting Vettel ahead of us, we still have some overtake to deploy, which means we should secure a brilliant sixth place for us in this championship. As you come down to the front, we are going to see the Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton come through to win the season opener at Bahrain, just as he did in real life in 2021 ahead of Max Verstappen. As we come around the final corner now, Vettel cannot touch us. We've done him in the rivalry, and it's sick place for IIRL. That's it for another spectacular Grand Prix here in Bahrain, and a real champion's drive to take the win. Anthony Davidson, a resounding victory today. What set them apart from the rest? It was a question of right place, right time today. We were looking at an entirely different race before the safety car came out, but they were able to take full advantage after the field had been bunched up. After an excellent performance at the Grand Prix, I'm sure there'll be plenty of celebrations tonight amongst the Mercedes team, and they certainly deserve it. So, for those of you who any doubt that Hamilton was retiring, that is not the case. He is back, and he has won the Bahrain Grand Prix. But it's a, it's a small victory for us because sixth place, what a result. An incredible performance. Lewis Hamilton secures the top spot in the Drivers' Championship. Let's focus on the driver of the day, Anthony Davidson. Who do you pick? I'm going to give it to the owner driver today. They fought so hard and had incredible pace at times, so I don't think anyone else did a better job today. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. Mercedes move to the top of the table. It's been an absolutely wild weekend of Formula One action. I can't wait to see what's next. Savor this, guys. P6 in the driver's standings. That is not going to last um, for, a very, for a very long time, if I'm honest. But there with the constructors done as well. What a result for us. That Brilliant. Was an exciting race from our perspective. Let's have yours. You were cutting your way through the field during the race. Believe in the yeet. That's all I'm gonna say. The power of yeeting will guide me. You're surpassing all expectations. Can anything or anyone stop you? Michael Massey probably could. It's an epic battle today. How do you think this will play out? Uh, you might want to ask me that in a few more races, Claire. We don't have the faster car. Well, that's everything. So there we go. Let's see how this affects our rivalry. And Vettel has actually got the faster lap, so that evens everything out. It doesn't mean that we take the lead. 
So Vettel is ahead of us by one point in the rivalry, but we have got to sort out our qualifying pace if we are to stand a chance of leveling with Sebastian. Unfortunately, Tictum did not have a good race at all. As you see, he finished very low. He finished out of the points, whereas we got a P6. Pushes our team a claim up to P to 17. Our driver claim currently is at 13. We've hit all of our sponsorship goals, which was the asking the into asking the question answering the questions practice programs and not dnfing so that's going to add more and more to our funds we've got 4.7 million to invest so now i will be having a bit of a think about what departments i want to invest in before the next video actually comes out so thank you guys so much for watching we are now back at team headquarters thank you all for watching if you enjoyed the video as we look to renew our sponsorship renewal. So if you enjoyed this video, do leave a like and do subscribe. Um, that will really help me out to produce more videos on the channel. And leave a comment on how you thought the race um, went along. The things that you may like to see in future videos. And with that guys, I'm going to sign off for what has been a brilliant debut for IRR Spark Racing. So thank you guys for watching. I've been Spark. See you guys next time out. Bye bye.